Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson eight of the platform specific series of my ARM assembly programming tutorials. And you can see we've got a DS and a Game Boy Advance emulator on the screen, and that probably implies we're going to be doing Game Boy Advance and Nintendo DS programming. We're creating a tile map, a 16 color scrolling tile map. Now, this is going to be without rotation, we're just doing a very basic one here. But um, we're going to create an example that actually works on both systems. This is almost entirely the same code working on both machines because the Nintendo DS graphics system is an extension of the uh, Game Boy Advance one. Uh, it's sort of backwards compatible, so we've created our example, and just with a few extra commands to configure the extra memory and things, we've managed to get it working on both systems, so that's a bit of fun. So we're gonna be having a look at this example today. Let's um, go over to the code, and let's take a look after I just close these two down. So over we go. Okay, so here is the code we're gonna be looking at today. Now, we're going to be showing that very crude tile map that I just showed you. Um, we've got the tile map data here, and we've got um, the pattern data, which is the graphics, and we've got a file just here. How can you make the data in this valid tile format? Well, um, if you want, you can use my AccuSprite editor. It's included in the downloads on my website for this tutorial. And um, you can see here, here are the graphics you just saw in the rather um, depressingly crude tile map. Or you can see the tile map just there. And um, you can basically go to the ARM menu here, the Game Boy Advance, and you can select save 4-bit per pixel or 8-bit per pixel. Now, for 4-bit per pixel for today's example, but um, you can save the format for the tile map and also the sprites there. So that's how I created the um, the tile data for today's example. Now, the data is actually in what I tend to refer to as linear format. Now, you, t you get two possible formats for bitmap data on these systems. You get bit planes where all of the bit zeros for the um, color definition are in one byte and all the bit ones are in one byte and then all the bit twos and bit threes in a set of four total bytes for 16 colors. That's not how this works. We basically using one nibble for each color for zero to 15. So um, it, it's the same as the MSX2 style format, very simple format. So uh, that's what we're using for today's example. And this is the 16 color tiles we're using here. Now, to get this tile map working, we're gonna to have to do a few things. Most of them are gonna be the same on the Game Boy Advance and the Nintendo DS. So we're gonna start by discussing the Game Boy Advance because it's the basic system, as I say, the Nintendo DS is borrowing the Game Boy Advance. So the first thing we're gonna to have to do is we're gonna to have to turn our screen on. We are turning layer one on here in screen mode zero here. We're using this port here, which is far too long a number for me to try and pronounce. Um, and that's turning on the screen graphics there. Next, what we're going to do is we need to gonna define the size of the tile map and the pattern data memory address. Now, the video memory for the tile map is at 6 million in hexadecimal, but um, that is for the tile map and the pattern data. And if we have them overlapping at the same point, then pattern zero will be unusable because it will actually be overlapped by the tile map. So we're gonna move it to a different place. So the tile map will be here and the pattern data at zero will be usable. And we are going to set that with this bit just here, with this four here. And that's defining the pattern base at hexadecimal 6004000, which is going to be the first tile, tile zero of our pattern definitions. So that's what we're doing there. And then we're defining the screen size of the logical tile map. The visible tile map is gonna be fixed. That's 32 tiles by 24 are gonna be visible. But we're gonna want something bigger because we've got that scrolling effect. Now, the way it works is actually quite curious on this system. Basically, we have 32 by 32 tile maps and we can combine them together to make bigger tile maps. Now, the, the screen is 32 tiles wide and these virtual tile maps are 32 tiles by 32 tiles. So to allow the screen to scroll in both directions, the minimum we would need would be 64 times 32. That's two tile maps, one on the left and one on the right to build this rectangular tile map that we're gonna use. And that's exactly what we've done here. And this four here that we're putting into this register here is going to define the 64 times 32 tile map. And they're gonna have two separate memory addresses and we'll discuss that in just a moment. So we're sending that to 4 million and 8 here in hexadecimal and that is turning on background zero That's the layer and it's setting it up with these tile map parameters And that's going to be what we're going to use next What we're going to do is we're going to define our colors now We need to send these to 5 million We send them two bytes at a time and each bit is going to be five bits for blue five bits for green and five bits for red And there's one unused bit there. So that's what we're sending here. You can see the palette data down here. Now we've actually got a little command that I wrote for this lesson. It's called LDIR16. And if you're a Z80 fan, you'll recognize LDIR load and increment. I like to 
kind of keep the um, ZH alive in these later tutorials because it vaguely manages to maintain a little bit of my sanity when I'm working on so many systems. So we've got this command here and it works in half words. Um, the Game Boy doesn't work well, the Game Boy Advance doesn't work well. If we work in bytes it goes a bit weird because of some of the memory addresses the VRAM reset to the other byte when you write just one of them. So uh, we, we're best to work in half or full 32-bit words. I thought half, half words would be more flexible so that's what I've done here. So this command is transferring R3 bytes from memory address R1 to memory address R2. Just a simple copy command, and we're going to use that a few times. The first time we're using it here is to copy the palettes, two bytes per palette, and we're defining the first 16 palettes basically here. So we've got our colors ready. Um, we need our patterns now. Our tar map just defines a number, and that references a tar pattern to actually show in that position. So our tile patterns are those things I just mentioned that I exported here. We've got them just here. And what we're doing here is we're transferring them to memory address 600400 here. And we define that with this nibble here. This 4 here will define this to be tile 0. So here we're transferring the tile pattern data into video memory for our use. Okay, so we've got colors and we've got tile patterns now. And we're actually ready to define the tile maps. Now, as I said before, there's two 32 by 32 tile maps side by side. Um, the first one is at memory address 6 million. And the second one is at 6 million 800 here. So we've got these two. And these are the left and the right hand side one. And I can show you this if I disable this one here. And I run our example again. You can see it's working. But uh, while um, the vertically it has got to two tile maps, now we've got this massive blank area here. And so as soon as this goes off the screen, you will see we've got a completely blank screen. And then that tile map will start to come back in over on this. Here it comes. There we go. So you can see here, basically, um, yeah, we've got these two tile maps working in tandem here. And um, if, if we don't define them both, we'll get nothing. Now, we're using the same tile data for both. But if we were writing a game, we'd want to start shifting in new tiles or calculating new tiles for an infinite scrolling world like you'd see in your Mario world, your Super Mario 3, that kind of thing. But we're using just the same example tile map in both cases here. So we transfer them over. The tile map is 32 by 32, and there's two bytes per tile. The tile format is pretty straightforward here. Um, you can see it here. So we've got all of these bits here defining the tile pattern number and we're starting from zero. And then we've got a horizontal and a vertical flip and a palette selection. Now we're just using palette zero here so we've not defined any of those. Our, pa our pattern selection here, this is our tile map here they are. And you can see we're just using effectively a single byte here. And we're just using an LDIR 16 to transfer them all into video memory. Now if we had set this here to zero, then we would have actually needed to offset the tile number and maybe added 256 or something, just depending on our memory addresses. But because we are offsetting the pattern base, um, we can start from tile zero in our references here. I did originally have it changed differently. I was adding 128 or something like that to um, to start from not pattern zero, but I thought it was cleaner to start from pattern zero for this example, so that's what we've done. Okay, so that's defining the tile maps. Now, what we've got left of this example is actually um, showing the scrolling effect. Now, this is done by these two here. If I just disable these, I can just show you that. Actually, let's run this on the Game Boy Advance. I'm supposed to be talking about the Game Boy Advance. So I say that they are basically the same machine to a lot of cases here. So you can see here, it's not scrolling at all now. And that's because we've um, disabled the update of those two registers. And they're very simple here. We've got 4 million and 10 here, and that is the X offset. And we've got 4 million 12 here, and that is the Y offset here. So we've got these two scrolling options, and we're setting them both, just doing an increment here, and then we've got a really cruddy delay here. And that's, um, that's what we're doing there, just to keep things slow. And it's different on both systems, because the Nintendo DS is, of course, a lot faster. It's a very basic delay, but just as I say, this is just a simple example to show a minimal way of getting the system working. So there we go, that's the Game Boy Advance version, um, and really the only bit that is exclusive to the Game Boy Advance is this little bit here, this bit of defining the screen settings. On the Nintendo DS, it's very slightly different. Now you can see here's the DS version. If I just delete this, get it out of the way for a moment, we can compare them. Now, um, you can see here, that this 4 million register here, um, we are actually setting just here. Now, the setting is very slightly different. We have to set this bit here as well, and that is to turn the display on, otherwise we won't get any display, which would be rather disappointing. Apart from that, I think the settings are actually pretty similar. So um, in this case, we're sending the same settings. I think in some other cases, they're slightly different, but in this case, apart from that bit there, the, the register basically works the same. 
Uh, we also have to turn on the 2D and enable with this power control register here at um, 4 million Theo 4. That's to get the hardware turned on. And then the final thing is we need to enable the VRAM here because if we don't do that, our example is not going to work if I just show you that. You can see this is working just fine. But if we forget to turn on our VRAM, no display. So um, I say the hardware basically works the same, but we just need a few extra settings here to enable the display to work on the Nintendo DS. But apart from that, all the other code is exactly the same. Now, after this example, we're going to, in another lesson, we're going to move on and have a look at hardware sprites. Uh, they were not quite as similar. They were very similar still, but the memory addresses of the sprite patterns and things had actually moved in some cases. So it was a little bit more different than this one, but this one is really very similar on both, both systems. So there we go. So that's all we're covering today. Um, I hope you've liked this. If you have, as I always say, please go to my website. You can download the assembly scripts to build the example. And of course, you can download the source code for today's example, as well as the sample tile sprite data that you saw in the example. And you can get the AcroSprite Editor. It's all included in the download. So if you want to have a go with that, you can do so. And AcroSprite Editor is open source. If you want to mess with that and make it better, you could certainly can. I'm sure there's plenty of ways you can do that. Um, as I say, you can always you can go to my website, get the source code, and welcome to use it in any way you manage to benefit from. Good luck to you because that's the whole name of the game, really. It's supposed to be about um, helping other people do things, so use it for whatever you want to do. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this, please hit the like button below the video because it helps me out. And if you hit the subscribe, that helps me out as well. It improves my morale when I see lots of people enjoying the videos. And also, if you subscribe, then when the Sprite version comes out a little bit down the road, you'll catch it and hopefully you'll enjoy that as well. Anyway, Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video today, please consider supporting my content. It takes 20 to 30 hours a week to keep making these videos. It's basically all I do when I'm not doing my day job. And it's only through the support of my patrons and the other sponsors that I'm able to continue Justify doing it, essentially. You can back me on Patreon. I post a weekly update with the latest work on the current projects I'm doing. You can see one here and also the newest videos. There's a large backlog of videos that are currently only available to the patrons, although they will all be available to everyone later on. And also it's the backers who I ask when it comes to making decisions on how to change the content in the future, what new content to create and things like that. You can see there was recently a survey of the backers so I can plan next year's content. As well as Patreon, you can now become a member of my channel on YouTube. There's a join button you should see just below this video. You can use that. YouTube backers get the same content as Patreon. I just post it through the YouTube interface instead of the Patreon. It's the same content every week. Also, if you prefer, you can go to my Teespring store and you can get some Chibi Akamas merchandise or some Learn ASM merchandise if you prefer, if that's how you'd like to back me. Links for all three are in the description of this video below. Uh, anyway, whatever you decide to do, I hope you've really enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching today and goodbye.